Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our FA-18C and we're looking at long-range toss bombing with unguided bombs. So we recently did a campaign mission where all of us had to bomb a runway in Hornets, low bombing with unguided bombs and this runway was uh, severely guarded with radar guarded AAA and IR SAMs and we all got absolutely slaughtered because we went in and tried to bomb over the runway essentially with CCIP bombing. So uh, my friend Shifty has taught me a way to do it with toss bombing and that's what we're going to look at today. This is where we can toss unguided bombs from a range of four miles or over basically in safe range and get them relatively accurately. So before we go let's just look at controls we're going to be using today. So we're going to be using sensor select, select switch forward, possibly the art we'll need as well, and throttle designated control depress, and to drop the weapons, weapon release button. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set our bombs up. We've got 10 times Mark 82s. Make sure the master arm is on, air to ground, select the Mark 82s. Mode has to be auto, M fuse. Put that as nose, E fuse. I'm going to put that as instant. That's just what I want to do. We have to set up the ripple here. I want to ripple all of these bombs one after another to nail this runway. So I'm going to click UFC. Quantity. I want 10 bombs on one drop. Multiple. I want one at a time. And interval 50 feet between them. Okay, we've got everything set up here. Now we need to look at setting up a target point that we can bomb on uh, so that our auto bombing will work. Two ways of doing this. First of all is with a waypoint. This waypoint can either be set in the mission editor or we can set it ourselves. Just for ease, I've set it in the mission editor and I've set it waypoint one directly in the middle of that runway. So we can see how we can do that now. Go to the A and PCD. We can click waypoint to turn the waypoints on. We can go to waypoint one there and we can click, we can click waypoint designate there that will designate our waypoint one as a target point and just head in there to prove that so you can see we've got that target point in the middle of the runway it's a target point it's got a range and we're good to go or we can designate manually through the HUD which is what we'll try next so we're going to turn these waypoints off we're going to head away get some range about 20 miles and get some altitude and then we'll go in and mark a target manually Okay, so we're up above the target now. We're going to designate the target point through the HUD now. So we're going to press Center Select Forward once. And you can see what we've got some new symbology. Now the important thing is that we've got a dot in the middle of our path vector here. Sometimes you need to press Center Select Forward more than once. Sometimes two or three times. It can just be stubborn. The important thing is that, that we get this dot here. If you keep pressing it and the dot still doesn't appear, then the chances are that you have your center of interest set to either one of the DDIs, the right or the left. You can tell because it'll have a little star in the top right hand corner of the screen. If that's the case, then press center select back, then center select forward, and you will get your dot in the path vector there. That essentially means with that dot that the HUD is now your center of interest and you can use it to designate. Just going to pull up to show that we get our auto symbology here. So we've got our auto targeting symbology here. We've got a Plum, a dotted plumb line hanging down from our path vector down to a targeted point here surrounded by this rose here. The idea is we want to maneuver our aircraft now so that this dot here is on the exact point where we want to designate. When the, it is on the exact point we want to designate we're going to press TDC to press to lock it into INS position. Now it's easiest to do this up from, from up high but you can do it from a safe distance so you've got no chance of being hit by the SAMs. I'm going to go quite close just for this example. So I want it right there and lock and we've got our target marked and you can see we've got our symbology here, distance to target and our countdown for our release and our auto method there. Right. We're a bit close to do our toss bomb run now so we're going to head out to about 10 miles or over and come in for the run. Okay we're 12 miles out now we're going to turn in. Okay, now we're going to talk about our ingress profile. So to do toss bombing, you can be essentially at any altitude, but in the real world, you're almost always going to want to be low to avoid ground fire or, you know, the reason that you're having to do this toss bombing. Next is speed. Now you can do it at different speeds, but you almost certainly want to be going extremely fast. I found the best results come at 600 knots plus. The lower the speed you're going, the closer you're going to have to get the, to the target and the harder it is to get the release. So what we're going to do is we're going to head towards the target 600 knots plus on the deck. Once we get to 6.5 miles here on the range counter here, we're going to pull up aggressively and uh, just before we start pulling up we're going to press and hold the weapon release and we're going to hold it all the way until the bombs are released. So first of all let's get low, fast and lined up. 
Burner's on. So the release, it will be done, we're using auto mode, so the actual releasing of the bombs will be done automatically. But we have to judge the azimuth uh, as, per as perfectly as we can. Now, when we pull up, our path, our path vector here is going to rise and we want to keep it laterally centred on this plumb line as best we can. The accuracy of the bombing will de depend on how accurately we can follow this line up. Now, as we get to about 30 to 35 degrees ascent, we're going to hold our climb there and we're going to wait at which point a release queue which is a little horizontal line is going to drop from the top down until it meets our path vector here when it re reaches our path vector here and the release count gets down to zero the bombs will release when we're sure that all the bombs are released give it another second and then we can turn away to safety now there are things that we can do wrong in fact this is pretty hard to do it took me a few goes to uh, get it working we can, if we pull up too slow, not aggressively enough, then we will not get up to the kind of 30 degrees quick enough, and then we will miss our release cue altogether, and we we'll basically won't be able to drop the bombs. As well as that, if we pull up too fast and too aggressively and get above kind of 35 degrees, it is technically still possible to get the release, but you tend to get inaccuracy, so we want to stick as best as we can to the profile. Okay, let's get on with it. On speed, nine miles. Shut up, morning. Six point seven five release and pull. And the bombs have dropped. We've now got a time till impact, and we can turn away. There go the beauties on their six mile journey. Just to quickly make sure that I'm safe. Lovely, that's one shattered runway. So that is toss bombing. Like I said, you can do it at different speeds. I would suggest doing it at the maximum speed like I showed there. Otherwise, it just gets very difficult. Don't have much else to say. I hope that helps and see you later.